Do you feel like schools could be doing a better job at preparing our children for the future? Today I wanted to talk to you about five things that I feel are crucial but yet missing in uh, our children's education today. Uh, first, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the educational system, which, um, as many know, uh, it's you know it's less than optimal. Uh, in the U.S., we have a really high uh, dropout of students who are just no longer interested in learning, and uh, some high schools have a dropout of even 60%, um, which is sad. And uh, we have a system where Uh, schools compete against each other and then um, groups compete against each other and students compete against each other. And uh, this system of competition, uh, which is also based on a very specific hierarchy of subjects where math is at the top and then you have, you know, writing, reading. And then at the end of that hierarchy, you have arts and humanities and other things. And... Um, It's a very standardized uh, way of thinking, a very standardized way of educating. There's a lot of education going on. Children spend hours upon hours upon hours at school. Uh, so they're being educated. They're just not learning anything, uh, like Sir Ken Robinson says, right? Now, teachers in the U.S. are also seriously underpaid. Uh, the job is not like the sexiest job that you could have in the planet. Um, it's actually quite the opposite comparing to other countries that actually te treat their teachers, um, you know, with high respect and they give them a lot more authority like Finland. Um, but I'll come back to Finland at the end. But uh, anyway, back to the educational system. Uh, we have an educational system that comes from a... Um, a background of compliance and a background of uh, trying to diminish children's potential, like John Taylor Gatto says. He was a famous teacher in New York and he was given many awards, sorry. And he basically said that children were being trained to become uh, good Egyptians, as he said, uh, within the pyramid. And uh, he also mentions that uh, He, in his books that uh, children have about maybe nine hours at most of free time, you know, to do whatever they want. And uh, they have very little privacy. And so this delivers a very standard, obedient uh, class of individuals who doesn't question too much, uh, etc. And this whole concept came about, uh, it's not a recent concept, this came about uh, when uh, the Prussian Empire uh, was at its peak and they needed uh, an obedient class of soldiers and uh, that would uh, go and stand and fight against wars. And this is the reason why they made, you know, bells and they have the straight rows and they have um, a very specific system to uh, not enhance your potential, but diminish it uh, from my perspective. Now, this uh, specific system uh, was focused on obedience and focused on specific jobs, uh, very mechanical jobs. And so this is why you have that hierarchy of subjects. And this is why um, some subjects are not even taught at uh, school level. Which brings me to the next point, which is uh, what are those five things that I feel are missing? Well, the first one is creativity, of course. Now, I'm a musician and uh, I love creative people, but I don't think that that's a trait that is uh, particular to one individual or two individuals or a group of individuals. I actually believe, like Sir Ken Robinson does, that children are naturally artists. They are just explorers, they're artists, they, they come with that chip, right? But it is educated out of them. Because uh, uh, through the learning process, through the educational process, um, instead of enhancing and allowing them to, to explore, to create, to do things outside of the box, uh, the system actually pushes you into like, you have to do this in this way. This is the correct way, right, to do it. And that brings me to my next point, which is that uh, we are being taught that um, mistakes are not okay. So it's, it's not okay to be wrong. And uh, this is how we, we have evolved for so many years, right? Uh, Aristotle was wrong about a great, deal of many, you know, a great deal of things. And so were all the natural philosophers back then. They didn't have enough information. But what's important is that eventually, as, as a species, we have learned from those mistakes. And we have you know, perfected the concepts and perfected the, the theories that we have. And we need to keep pushing forward in, in that direction. So creativity 
from my perspective and 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 mistakes is not just a, a, a trait again for one people for one group of people but it's something that we should all have present in our lives um, it is creativity that helps you solve problems and then it is uh, the fact that you're going to be wrong and you know if you if you the same the same way you write a song and then you you write a song that really is not good and then you write another one that is no good and then you write another one and then at some point you come to a point where oh this is this is good so you're walking in in, in a certain path and it's the same for uh, anything for physics for math for everything uh, at first you make mistakes then you learn from your mistakes and then you know that allows you to to improve uh, your learning experience that allows you to improve uh, you know or even redefine uh, new concepts that weren't even there before right um, but here we, you know, in the school system, it's all about uh, grades and uh, this is why they grade us like vegetables or, or, or meat or etc. Right. And they have this grading system. And uh, that, of course, pushes you into the concept of, oh, uh, I, I can't be wrong. You know, the being wrong is is uh, is not OK. It's uh, and uh, it carries on to the to the workplace even because you can't be wrong because, oh, they're going to fire me. Right. So this whole concept is not necessarily pushing humanity in the in the right direction, I feel. The third point that I wanted to come across is financial freedom. Children are not being taught on uh, living within your means, uh, spending less than you earn, uh, budgeting, saving for big expenses, uh, saving for emergencies, um, how to, and even further, how to invest in real estate, in uh, um, you know financial uh, instruments like uh, bonds and uh, etc. So all of these things deliver people that are in debt. Uh, probably forever for the for the rest of their lives that have no savings uh, that just end up being consumers and there's a very big difference between being a consumer and being like an investor or something if you consume you just you know if I'm a consumer I, I buy an iPhone every time that it comes out oh the new one the new one the new one um, but uh, so I'm just spending money money is just going out but if I invest in Apple stock or if I invest in another company's stock or if I invest in some real estate and rent it or remodel it or do something with it, then I'm creating more money than I'm, than I'm spending on. And at some point, you know, if you do it for a long enough period, uh, you start enjoying some of those benefits. And so I really wish that children received more of this knowledge early on in their lives, you know, budgeting, doing it. In income versus expenses, etc. The fourth point that I wish children were taught was super learning and critical thinking. Uh, by super learning, I mean uh, schools, you know, a place where you learn a bunch of stuff, but you never learn how to learn that. So you never learn how to memorize, uh, you know, so that it's easier for your brain to organize uh, thoughts, to, to classify things so that you won't uh, forget. Because uh, what happens most of the time, and that happened to me when I was younger, you know, I used to study, do the test, and then after you do the test, you you have no idea what you just answered, right? And you have no idea, you know, what just happened. And uh, But the idea of learning is, it's like a progressive thing, but it's also... Um, they should teach you some of those things that, uh, you know, like Jim Quick has a, some courses out there. A, a lot of people have courses out there and some of them are even very inexpensive. And it's on how to memorize things, how to understand better things, how to read faster. You know, those are all skills that I feel are missing in, 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 in school today. And uh, critical thinking is just the pos the, the the ability to analyze uh, what you're reading and being able to say oh yes from based on what I've read um, or based on what I've gathered as information I I will come up with my own decision which my own conclusion is uh, the A you know or B or you know I feel this is wrong I feel this is right you know this uh, critical thinking is taking out of them because they are supposed to answer either A or B or C and and they're not supposed to question it right so if you if you put it inside people's head for a long enough period of time they will just uh, stop questioning and um which is not a good thing i mean mankind has advanced thanks to questioning to you know uh trying to analyze things in a different pers from a different perspective and etc 
Anyway, the fifth and uh, definitely not the least important uh, point that I really wish children were being prepared on today was emotional intelligence and communication. And what I mean by emotional intelligence is basically the ability to understand other people's feelings, needs, um, etc. and to be able to communicate with them uh, in a way that benefits both of you both parties and also being able to tackle in uh, you know uh, information so that uh, it doesn't get overwhelming and you're you become frustrated and you act out and you know these kind of things are not you know children are not being trained on them and um, I think early on it's important to train children and help them uh, develop more of their prefrontal cortex activity and less of the amygdala activity if you know what I mean and what I mean is uh, you know uh, being less reactive and uh, being a little more reflective when uh, the time comes and uh, schools very few of them that I found have you know uh, uh, mindfulness trainings or consciousness trainings or etc even though it works it has worked for many you know years um, decades probably thousands of years and uh, unfortunately this uh, knowledge is uh, not present in schools today because they're focused on children learning to add and subtract and you know read and Things that, uh, like John Taylor Gatto says, you could teach in, you know, a handful of hours, you know, maybe 100 or 200 hours at most. But uh, these are the five things um, that we've covered. Number one is creativity. Uh, number two, uh, mistakes are okay. Number three, financial freedom. Number four, super learning and independent or critical thinking. And number five, emotional intelligence and communication. So these are the five things that I feel are missing on uh, education today. And what can we do about it? That's the question, right? What, uh, is there no way out? Is there, you know, well, uh, from my perspective, these are some of the tips that I can give you and uh, that I feel will eventually turn the tide uh, in our favor as parents. So number one is find fun activities and do them with your children. You know, there's fun games that you can play, financial games. There is, uh, uh, you know, mindfulness games. There is a lot of things that uh, you can find now on the Internet, in Amazon, in Walmart, in, you know, in so many places. And just be engaged with your children. Um, the second one is to get involved in their education, regardless of whether you're, you know, homeschooling or private school or public school. Uh, just uh, takes a few minutes every day to see what they're learning, you know, see if you can help them, see if you can, you know, uh, wake up the giants in there, like wake up the learning giants and, and uh, just show them a different perspective on things. And uh, obviously you want to reduce the amount of uh, interest that you have in grades. Uh, you want to more like make them understand why they're not learning a certain concept and try to help them instead of like uh, fo being focused on so much on grades from my perspective focusing on grades just doesn't really make that much of a difference if you notice it you know in the long run and uh, so that's just you know that's just a personal thing but i feel like just as important as grades is like the question why why is this children not learning or or is this children really learn is this child really learning um etc another tip that i have for you is reduce or eliminate uh tv time and video game time i mean uh video game time and tv time those are times where your brain is actually just engaged um, in alpha activity and which means that you're absorbing uh, whether or not you choose to believe it or not, but you're absorbing what you're seeing. So if you're seeing, you know, this violent, uh, I don't know, uh, movie or um, uh, things that are not necessarily uh, nurturing for your brain, uh, your brain is actually absorbing them and it's uh, it's learning uh, from them. So children, with children, it's even more important that uh, they have, you know, in my opinion, very little or, uh, or no TV at all. Um, I mean, we hardly see any TV here but uh, I know that's a personal thing and that's you know depends on where you grew up uh, some of you guys might watch TV every day or you know but I'm saying 
from whatever you are, whatever you are, uh, just uh, try to limit or reduce the amount of TV so that they can have more time to think, to do other things um, instead of, you know, just sitting down passively and absorbing um, TV. And so the last thing that I wanted to mention to you is to look into Finland. Finland, very small country in Scandinavia, but uh, very brilliant. They have um, for many years now outperformed uh, pretty much the rest of the world, the rest of us in uh, all the subjects. And this is for the subjects that uh, we have tested, right? That, uh, that they have standardized tests around the world. Um, so we don't know on the other subjects how they do uh, because it's not being tested. But uh, for uh, for the, uh, the tests that they do, um, Finland actually typically comes ahead in math, in science, in, in most of these subjects. They do a really good job and you should look into what they do. But in general, um, they have collaboration instead of competition. So the schools don't really compete with each other. The students don't really compete with each other. They actually collaborate um, in the education. The uh, formal training doesn't really start until they are later in life, like six or seven. Uh, what I'm talking about formal is, uh, you know, the proper math and reading and all this stuff. Um, before that, they actually allow them to play a lot. And uh, they also have a lot bigger breaks. They have, you know, uh, more continuous breaks and they have uh, a lot more breaks so that uh, children are able to, you know, take a little break for a while and then go back to learning and then take a little break and then go back to learning. And uh, that is work working really well for them. Of course, being a teacher in Finland is really a privilege the way that it should be around the world, um, you know, because you are responsible for the future generations, right? So what, you know, what better job is there to, to than that, right? Uh, so they have a really good, uh, you know, compensation for teachers. They are compensated as pretty much any other profession. And, um, and they also have a lot more focus on creativity. And in general, their curriculums are actually um, designed by the teachers, not by politicians, not by the school, not by anybody else, uh, but the teachers. And I think that makes a lot of sense to me, you know, because you have a, a group that is very diverse and you want to address their needs. You want to address their needs and you want to see what they want to learn. And uh, when you get that, you adjust your curriculum so that, you know, whatever you want to teach uh, matches what they want to learn. And um, of course, the results are, you know, the results are out and, and the, uh, it's a system that, in my opinion, works. Anyway, I'm going to stop there, but I would like you to share this with uh, a parent, a teacher, a grandparent, anybody who's involved in uh, children's education today. And remember to like, share, comment. And if it is within your heart, I also have a Patreon page. And if you'd like to see more videos like this one, uh, you can contribute uh, starting as low as $1. Uh, it's totally fine. Thank you so much and I'll catch you on the next one.